Welcome to the Corriboyle Galway International Rally for 2020. A brand new year, a brand new season awaits for us in the Irish Tarmac Rally Championship. Lots of drivers have changed their cars this year. Is that going to make it a level playing field out there? Will competition be fierce? I'm sure it will. Join us today as we go across nine stages to see all the action. Anticipation is building then, ahead of a fresh season of action. Cars have been through scrutiny at the Motor World Garage and it's the first opportunity to get a glimpse of the brand new liveries on display. The crews have one day here in Galway to prove themselves. A flat out attack from the start across nine stages, which are already challenging from their very nature. Add to that some winter weather and you have an event which demands respect as well as bravery. Galway City is ready for action. The traditional season opener brings the fans to Air Square on Saturday evening, as well as the great and good of the sport. The Subaru WRC of number one seeded entry Gary Jennings and Rory Kennedy would roll over the start ramp but would not start the rally. Jennings withdrew ahead of Sunday stages. Last year's runner-up in the championship and the man who sealed second in Galway in 2019 is Alistair Fisher. What can we expect from Galway this year? It's always a tough, tricky rally out there. The weather's certainly going to play its part. It certainly is. You know, it's the start of the year. Everybody's way a bit cold, so uh, you know, the, the conditions are always very changeable. A uh, lot of muck, a lot of water, and with the narrow lanes as well, you know, it just sort of holds a lot of, lot of gravel and stuff, so it'll definitely be a challenge. A good summary there of what the event has in store for us condition-wise. Now, how about competition-wise? 2015 Irish Tarmac champion Donna Kelly is being very diplomatic about his hopes. I'd be happy if I'm anywhere close to it. Um, I think these guys have more experience in R5s, but in saying that, I love my new car, so um, I have no excuse either. Sam Moffat has a change of machinery, switching to a Hyundai R5 for this season. Another car change, this time for the wicked Welshman. Probably going to be a dryish day tomorrow, but there's so much mud out there, there's no way it'll clear, so it's going to be tricky from the word go. Marion Evans again chancing his arm as a weather forecaster. That didn't work out for him too well in Cork last year. And funnily enough, Desi Henry is giving us a very different outlook on the weather. Obviously it's looking tricky, as per usual, it gives a lot of rain tomorrow, although it might clean the stages a wee bit, so it might actually be a good thing. But uh, look, the stages actually look quite nice, they're quite technical, bumpy in places, but uh, there's a bit of everything, so it'll be a long rally ahead. It's great to see Keith Lyons back in action this year with Niall Burns alongside. Their fiesta was drawing a lot of attention from the crowds. Yeah, no, we put a bit of work into the car now and we're delighted how it turned out. I've changed the car a slight little bit for, for this year in setup, so hopefully uh, yeah, it pays, pays dividends tomorrow. So I'm looking for more grip, obviously, always. So, yeah, yeah. Sunday morning dawned and it was time to get going. Three stages run in a loop and repeated three times was the format. The day started dry, but the stage conditions were anything but. For Alistair and Gordon, the event couldn't have got off to a better start. Leaders after stage one and then extending their advantage out to 18 seconds after the loop was complete. Short two left in tidy, early crest narrows and one right stay in, 60 over crest, one right plus stay in, 40, slowing turn hairpin left round the curb, don't cut, 60, one left stay in, 40, slight right, 80. Donna Kelly and Connor Foley were happy men at the end of the first stage, being the meat in the Volkswagen 1-2-3 sandwich. A difficult run on stage two dropped them back, but they reclaimed second after setting the fastest time on the black road. 
One right, one right, AV3, 250. Could be slippy break and turn square left. Keep it. Mud inside. 80. Mid over long crest, 40. Mid over crest jump. 200 down. To short five right in the bottom. Short five right in the bottom. In early and push. And it's flat to the next junction. 60. Flat one right opens over crest. Oh, yeah. All right, 100, flat one left, push. Desi Henry and the Hyundai seemed to be a great match. It was a slightly cautious run over the opening stage, but then he let loose. New co-driver on board this year is Scotsman Stuart Loudon. They were third after as many stages. Six right, 80, flat, six left, over crest, half long times, five over second crest, 80. Crest flat, 100, 5 right minus, and 6 right over crest, 30, 5 left, keep over crest, into 6 right flat, and... The opening test seemed to be one for adapting for everyone in new machinery this year. Sam Moffat had a steady morning, and at one point his extinguisher came loose and was a distraction in the footwell of the car. He and James were fourth, just 6.2 seconds off the podium. By his own admission, Marion Evans felt a little bit rusty on the opening stage. His time, though, didn't reflect his lack of recent seat time. He was third fastest. The Welshman slipped from third to fifth after the first three. Josh Moffat, another to switch to the Hyundai R5, hadn't had a bad morning in second place after two stages. However, his run on stage three, the Black Road, would prove to be his undoing when the margins were so small. He had no issue, it just hadn't been the best of times. He dropped to six overall. Forestry champion Kahan McCourt was having a challenging morning. A stall on the opening stage, and then afterwards things just weren't clicking into place. He and Barry McNulty were seventh. Square right of the gate, don't cut. Idea on this, 20. Turn open, square left gravel, 60. Flat jump, 200. Very fast, three left, there's a wee bit of mud inside, but it's OK, 300. And after one fiesta, it's back to a string of them. Continuing here with Daniel Cronin and Shane Buckley, who were eighth overall. Good to see Stephen Wright back in action this season. Liam Moynihan is alongside in the Fiesta R5 and the boys were ninth after a good morning's run. Well, after years of the Skoda Super 2000, it was time to step into R5 machinery for David Guest. And today would be all about getting the mileage under his belt. He completed the top 10 for us after three stages. In the newest version of the Fiesta R5, the Mark II was Joe McGonagall and Kieran Geeney. And they were doing OK up until stage three, when this spin took a while to get out of. Precious time lost and a puncture to boot. Declan McCrory and Stephen O'Hanlon were moving up and into 12th after stage three. In tough, tricky conditions, Paul Barrett and Kevin Riley were on a confidence building exercise during the morning tests and were in the midst of a good battle. Opens at the gate, 60, three right slowing for left, four left. Three right slowing for left, four left. 40, care. One left and three right bump. One left and three right bump now. 60. Oh, two right go. 60. One right and one left slowing for three left over crest for three right. Three left for yep. three right. The jaw dropping livery of Keith Lyons remained unscathed until a tussle with the bridge on stage two. The rear of the car taking the impact and looking less than pretty. But sure, if you looked at it from the front, it was fine. They were 14th overall. Eugene Donnelly was back behind the wheel of the Proton R5, but unfortunately not for long. He retired after stage three. 
the sister Proton R5 was in the hands of Liam Egan. Tell me about the car behind you. Ah, first left-hand drive Proton in Ireland. <laughs> it's a sister car to Eugene's car and got it back over last week. I haven't driven it yet. Just set the seat and pedals and uh, looking forward to getting out this morning and see what I got. It's always a joy to see the iconic Metro 6R4 on the stages. Ray Breen warmed up on stage one, but disaster struck on stage two, as we find out with our reigning tarmac champ, Craig Breen. Yeah, just up to give my dad a hand. Uh, it was obviously out today in the family pride and joy, and uh, hasn't gone to plan, so um, my heart is bleeding a little bit, so, uh, but OK, yeah, it's unfortunately how it is here up in Galway, but uh, they're fine, and uh, you know, we'll get, get, it, uh, get it mended and back out again. What are we going to see from you this year? Are we going to see you back in action in Ireland? Uh, yeah, I'd like to. Uh, definitely, you know, it hurts to be here, not to be out. You know, drove over the stages this morning and, uh, you know, desperately would love to do the rally. I think we'll be definitely doing one or two before the, before the rest of the year, obviously. You know, I didn't miss out on winning Donegal last year. I'd like to try and uh, right that wrong. Uh, and, uh, of course, Killarney, I think Paul will try and convince me to go there as well. And there's probably another one or two as well. So uh, hopefully it won't be before too long. After three stages complete here in Galway, it's Alistair Fisher who leads with a good advantage. But look at the margins behind Donna Kelly. It's very close and highly entertaining. Three stages are already complete here at the Galway International Rally and the competition has been fierce so far. But Alistair Fisher is out in front by quite a nice little margin so far. But will it all change? Stick with us and you'll find out. Welcome back to the Corriboyle Galway International Rally. So far, our crews have competed over three stages with a further six to go. The heavens have been kind so far and the rain has held off, but there is a keen breeze whipping a chill through the stages. What better way to keep warm than some jiving? Out in front after building an 18 second lead were Alistair Fisher and Gordon Noble and that trend continued. You can see in sections here just how slippy the stages were. The middle stage of the loop was shortened after a few offs on the first pass. And what did I say about the weather? Well, the rain began to fall and it changed the whole complexion of the rally. But not the leader. It was still Fisher in front. Sam Moffat was having a fine run and in a monumental battle with Donna Kelly. He gained on him and stole second place on the stormy third stage. You know, it was very good in there, it was very wet, but it nearly made me concentrate more and we drove very well. Now, the top of the mountain was very shiny, we a wee bit of a slide, but sure, I guess the adrenaline going. Nothing like a bit of adrenaline to add in that extra focus. Just eight tenths of a second would separate Kelly from Moffat by the end of stage six. We were in for a thriller on the final stages. Two rate Shaney on scene. Repeat, two rate Shaney on scene. 150. Flat one left over crest. 180 down. Caution, there's water at the bottom. Very long, two left. Shaney continues 40 and very bumpy. 250 down. Break before Levy. Shaney breaking into four right at the bail. 60, very long four left, continues over 40, push second half. Marion Evans was holding fast to his statement of making it through, but the Welshman was doing way more than just that. He was posting decent times and staying ahead of former Irish tarmac champ Josh Moffat. Josh had definitely got over that third stage blip and was setting times more in tune with what we expect from him, although he's a little wide here. The rain was starting to affect play on the stages. It was only a matter of time before someone reported a bit of drama. I spun there at a square right and she dropped the two wheels over a bank, so I had to wait and the spectators come and give us a push out. So, no, we dropped a bit of minute there, but you're here. That's the joys of Galway. Desi Henry and Stu Loudon had been in third position overall when their suspension failed in stage four, forcing them to retire. Daniel Cronin was another loss, failing to emerge from the treacherous stage six. 
That stage also claimed Joe McGonagall, who clipped a bank and broke a rear arm. Out in the R5 for the first time, which he loved, was David Guest. Sadly, a mucky section caught him out on stage five and he got stuck. Keith Lyons was having a mixed day. Some good times, some moments, a slight kiss with a bridge and more drama was to follow. Keith, you can see the hazards on, what's been going on? I know, yeah, no, we broke a drive shaft off the line, so we had 20k of hell. We were all over the place, to be honest with you. Every time you're braking, it's snapping away. Every time you're on the power, it's snapping away, so they're trying to go up the gears. So we'll get back to service and hopefully they can solve it. Cal McCarthy was behind the wheel of a Citroen DS3 R5 and was in 14th after the challenging second loop. Paul Horton, with very experienced co-driver Darren Garrett alongside, was adapting to a new car and the conditions. A little different to the Caribbean. Last time I saw you was in much sunnier climbs in Barbados, exactly. I believe. What are we doing here? <laughs> but you know what, we decided to come and do it and give it a go and we're doing our best. I mean, we're not breaking any records, but we're doing it. We're, we're getting quicker and quicker, so that's what we're taking from it. Let's take a look now at our junior category at the end of the event. Taking third overall are Cahill Mullins and Ayrton Sherlock. Gareth Deasley and Ashley Bolton sealed second overall, just 11 seconds adrift of our junior winners, Noel and Jason Murphy. A successful outing for the Mayo men. Into the historic category now and sealing third overall are John O'Reilly and Nick Sparks. Welshman Berry and Richards with Elaine Lachey take second overall in Galway. And the outright historic winners are Morris and Stephen Meskel. One hundred and here for Royce, a gold here for Royce. Delighted to come away with the maximum points for the Tarmac Championship, so our plan is just to do event by event, so we'll see West Cork next now, hopefully, so we'll see. Let's take a look now at some of the local crews putting on a fine display in tricky conditions here in Galway. Into the national entry now, and the top five kicked off with Eugene Megan and Sarah Whelan. In their BMW, Richard and James Whelan sealed fourth overall. On to the national podium, and third overall, Jason Black and Carl Egan in the dynamic Toyota Starlet. 60. And three left, 60, one right, 130, care, three left into over jump bridge, and two right, 100, crest jump 200, <laughs> jump, crest jump 230, start square left, narrows to the pole, oh, come back. Former forestry champion Pat O'Connell and Mark Wiley take second, but ruling the roost at the head of the national field are Jason McSweeney and Liam Brennan. Let's take a look at ITRC3 and the R2 category. James Bolin and John McKay were right in the mix of things before mechanical issues ended their hopes in Galway. Dara and Aoife Raftery took away fourth in class. Taking third in their fiesta were Johnny Mulholland and Jeff Case. On his first full season and just third tarmac event, Jason Dixon proved he was no slouch. With Martin Brady alongside, they claimed a tight second to the overall victors, who were Eamon Kelly and Connor Moen. 
an impressive performance which bagged them the outright win. 40. Slow left on, right on Chris, you've only 40 towards Sutton Square left. One had 320 up here now over the flying finish. Good man, well done. Congratulations on the R2 win. That is a fantastic result here. Yeah, delighted. It was not easy at all, but glad to get here to the end and get the win. Nothing is easy in these conditions. Now into ITRC2 and taking third in class are Colin Flanagan and Liam McIntyre. In the Super 2000 Skoda, sealing second are Jer O'Donovan and Sean Hayde. Very fast right, 100. Easy left over crest, 100. And long, very fast left, 200 to the opening. Long, very fast left, 200 to the opening. Go on, keep it going, keep it going. Right, right, right. Keep it going, keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Right, keep it going. Good man. And taking the class win and sealing 10th overall in the international result are Willie Mavitti and Martin Connolly. Continuing through the international top 10 now, in ninth we have Paul Barrett and Kevin Riley. Declan McCrory and Stephen O'Hanlon take eighth overall. It was eventful, but Cahan McCourt and Barry McNulty seal seventh. Staying right for past four lap at Nips, it's okay. Past four lap Nips, okay. 400 over bumps, okay. A welcome return to the Irish Tarmac Championship for Stephen Wright and Liam Moynihan, who takes sixth. The top five rundown starts with Josh Moffat and Keith Moriarty, finishing 20 seconds adrift of Marian Evans and Jonathan Jackson. A huge battle took place on the final stage for second position and Donna Kelly and Connor Foley were just pipped to the post. A strong weekend, however, for the pair and Donna does love his Volkswagen. Sam Moffat and James Fulton had been growing in confidence all day and the final stage thriller put a big smile on both their faces. Second in Galway is not to be sniffed at. But walking away with a dominant victory which deserves all the credit are Alistair Fisher and Gordon Noble. Leading from start to finish to take the first win of the season and their first international win. Hey, we're very pleased. Um, just got off to a good clean start. Sort of didn't really look back. Um, it was still a difficult day with the conditions and you know, first time in the car, I know everybody had a lot of new cars, so it was good to get a clean start and uh, you get away at the front. Here is confirmation of the result here at the Corriboyle Galway International Rally. Fisher puts his name back on the trophy 21 years after Bertie. Moffat takes second with Kelly in third. In the national, McSweeney takes the honours, O'Connell second and Black third overall. Well, that's it for the Galway International Rally 2020. Alistair Fisher and Gordon Noble have taken away their maiden victory and are now our championship leaders. It's a bit wild and windswept here. We look now to the next round of the championship. We'll see you there.